So today I've got this awesome integral sent in by a viewer. So it involves a logarithm, it involves floor functions, and the ceiling function. And I guess it was originally from this problem solving magazine, Crux Mathematicorum, and this was from 1987. So we wanna suppose that b is bigger than one and it is an integer, and we want to evaluate this infinite integral. So it's the integral from zero to infinity of the floor of the log base b of the floor of the ceiling of x over x. Okay, so I'm actually gonna prove some preparatory results first, but let's get those on the board. So like I said, we're gonna first start off with some preparatory results that will make our final solution pretty slick. So we're gonna set f of x equal to the integrand. That is, it is the floor of the log base b of the floor of the ceiling of x over x. And we first wanna show that if x is bigger than or equal to one, then f of x is equal to zero. And then next, if n is a positive integer, and x is between one over b to the n plus one and one over b to the n, then f of x is equal to n. And these two things will help us write down a pretty quick solution. So let's look at this first one first. So I wanna suppose that x is bigger than or equal to one, and then also notice that I can write the ceiling of x as x plus epsilon, where epsilon is on the half open interval zero to one. So remember the ceiling of x is like a round up function. So it rounds up something like 6.2 up to seven. So in that case, our epsilon would be equal to 0.8 because that's what it takes to get to the next integer. Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and look at this quotient, which is the innermost part of our function of f of x under this setup. So we've got this ceiling of x over x. Well, that's always going to be bigger than or equal to one because the ceiling of x always makes something bigger. But now that's equal to x plus epsilon over x. Again, that's by our really definition of the ceiling function, but now we can break this up. This is gonna be equal to one plus epsilon over x. And then given the fact that x is bigger than or equal to one, we know that one over x will be less than or equal to one. So that tells us that this whole thing is less than or equal to one plus epsilon. But next, since epsilon is on the interval zero to one, not including one, that means that this is going to be less than two. So let's see what that gives us. So putting it all together, we have the ceiling of x over x is on this half open interval from one to two, not including two. But that tells us that if we take the floor of this object, we will always get one. So the floor of the ceiling of x over x is equal to one. But now if we take the log, really base anything of that, we will get zero. So let's notice that the log uh, base b of one, but let's go ahead and write one in this form is going to be equal to zero. But if we take the floor of both sides of this, we just end up with f of x on the left-hand side and then zero on the right-hand side. So we have established this first tool. Now we're ready to look at this second tool. So let's go ahead and start off by supposing that x is between one over b to the n plus one and one over b to the n, where here we are taking n to be some natural number. Okay, so notice that that tells us that x is going to be less than or equal to one. But now notice that if x is less than or equal to one, then that tells us that the ceiling of x is equal to one. Well, x is bigger than or equal to zero, so that puts us in the realm of positive numbers already, so that means that ceiling is most definitely one. But now if the ceiling of x is equal to one, then that means the ceiling of x over x is going to just be equal to one over x. 
but now we can invert this inequality to get an inequality involving the ceiling of x over x. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna take this kind of starting inequality and invert it along with our equality that the ceiling of x over x is one over x. Let's see what that'll give us. So that'll give us b to the n, we'll switch over to the smaller value, will be less than the ceiling of x over x, which is less than b to the n plus one. So we've got something like that. So next we're gonna take the floor of the inner part of this so that's gonna push us down. It can't push us past this left-hand endpoint though. So that's gonna turn this strict inequality to a not strict inequality. So we've got b to the n is less than or equal to the floor of the ceiling of x over x, which is less than b to the n plus one. Now we'll take the log base b of all parts of this inequality using the fact that log base b is an increasing function. So I'll just like denote that by log base b of squiggle as an increasing function. So log base b of b to the n is going to be equal to n. That's gonna be less than or equal to the log base b of the floor of the ceiling of x over x, which is less than n plus one. So now that we've got the log base b is between these two natural numbers, which means if we apply the floor to the inside, that's just gonna push us down to the lower natural number. But applying the floor to the inside is the same thing as setting up our function f of x. But that's gonna finish this part off. So we'll have n is less than or equal to f of x, which is strictly less than n plus one. But now we know that f of x only takes on integer values, but there's no integer between n and n plus one, which tells us that f of x must in fact be equal to n, which is what we wanted to show right here. Now that we've got these two facts worked out, we're ready to finish it off. So let's take our goal integral. I'll rewrite it right here. So this is gonna be the integral from zero to infinity of the floor of the log base b of the floor of the ceiling of x over x dx. Well, I can use this first fact to change my integral from zero to infinity to an integral from zero to one because the value of this function is just equal to zero if we are bigger than or equal to one. So this is gonna be the integral from zero to one of the floor of the log base b of the floor ceiling x over x. Now next what I'll do is sketch a graph of this function between zero and one. So maybe I'll make my axes like this. I'll put one over here. And then notice the important parts are these reciprocals of powers of B. So I'll make sure to put all of those points on the graph as well. So maybe I'll put this is one over B. And then this point right here will be one over B squared. This point right here will be one over b cubed, and then so on and so forth. Now, using this second rule, we know that if x is between one over b and one, which is one over b to the zero, we know f of x is equal to zero. So that means this function is actually just equal to zero right there, which means we could have put our upper bound as one over b instead of one, although I think it's a little cleaner to write it as one. Okay, nice. Now next, if x is between one over b squared and one over b, then f of x is gonna be one by this second thing that we figured out. So let's maybe put a one right here and notice that the function is going to take on this value between one over b squared and one over b. Okay, so next, between one over b cubed and one over b squared, it's gonna take on the value of two. So we can put that in as this rectangle. And then between one over b to the fourth and one over b cubed, maybe we'll put one over b to the fourth right here. 
it's gonna take on the value of three. So essentially we wanna sum up all of these areas of these rectangles. But that's actually a little bit tricky to do. But if we look at the area on its side instead, it's a little bit easier. So what I mean by that is let's graph the rectangles this way instead. So let's first notice that the area of this rectangle on its side that I've drawn in purple is one times one over B. And then this rectangle that I've drawn here in purple is gonna be one times one over B squared. Then next, this rectangle that I have in purple up here is gonna be one over B cubed. And now that's gonna continue all the way up. So just to reiterate, we are summing rectangles this way instead of summing rectangles out that way. So that tells us that we can write this as the sum one over B plus one over B squared plus one over B cubed plus dot, dot, dot. So it's gonna be an infinite sum. But we can see that that is very clearly a geometric series. And this is a geometric series where the starting term, which is sometimes called A, is one over B, and the common ratio, which is called R, is also one over B. And then geometric series have this sum rule that it is A over one minus R. So that means this sums to one over B over one minus one over B. Now we can multiply the numerator and the denominator by B, and that gives us B over B minus one. So we've calculated the value of our goal integral, and that's a good place to stop.